Welcome back to Retro Rebound. Today we're talking about Game Boy games coming out in 2021. No, not a prank at all. I actually fell down the internet rabbit hole, thinking to myself, with nostalgia and Kickstarter, certainly anything is possible. I wonder if Game Boy games are coming out this year. Wouldn't that be cool to talk about and spotlight here on this channel? And what I was actually thrilled to learn is there are a number of Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games dropping within the next year. So, without further ado, let's talk about Game Boy games dropping in 2021. If you're interested in more of that, be sure to consider subscribing as we have a lot of Game Boy content coming on the way. So let's get this started with Havenix Software. They're making a game called Infinity, and I find the backstory to this game pretty fascinating. So it leaked on the internet about five or six years ago, an incomplete game with a soundtrack that was there. And so many fans rallied around the game that they actually launched a Kickstarter. And if you go there right now, you'll see that Infinity, a Game Boy Color tactical RPG back after 20 years, is at over a quarter million dollars in backings with 3,000 backers over on Kickstarter. Now, of course, when something's backed on Kickstarter, it doesn't mean exactly it's coming, but I just found it fascinating that so many people like myself would totally pay for Game Boy games nowadays. What I also found really cool about this all is reading some of the wording and how games have evolved so much. You look at those photos of like the Cyberpunk 2077 scripts and how they're stacked thousands of pages high. But then you look at how they describe a Game Boy Color RPG where they say, an elaborate script with more than 3,000 lines of dialogue and 20,000 words. That's longer than Final Fantasy II and comparable to Dragon Warrior 3. They also mention advanced graphical techniques that make the most of the humble Game Boy Color hardware. And when you take a look at it here, I actually feel like this was Chrono Trigger in its infancy in a manner of speaking because the combat fades away unlike Chrono Trigger, but when it does fade in, it's in the open world area that you were exploring. And it's much less the static type of combat that we're accustomed to, especially on the Game Boy Color and Game Boy hardware. So I was actually really impressed with this one, but I just love this 8-bit, 16-bit era so much with all of my heart. So to see new games like this coming out, I am big on this one. Now, as for the story, they say an ancient nameless evil stirs beneath the earth, twisting the land and its people alike with its corrupting force. Two rival nations careen toward war as a shadowy figure arms them both with unholy weapons of immense power. And a disgraced knight is called upon to overcome the century-old pain that divides these people, his own grief, and malevolent forces fanning the flames of hate. This epic tale frames a role-playing game in a unique tactical battle system, a detailed world with over 50 explorable areas and more than 100 items and beautiful 8-bit graphics. Once again, just back to the numbers game. I'm going to continue to emphasize that. I think it's so cool to see that they're talking about like 50 unexplored areas that you're going to be able to go into and check out. Pretty impressive for the time period and the hardware that we're working on, but just amazing to see how far we've come. There's also a game coming from Green Boy called Shapeshifter, and they've got their own box here, and I really like this because they've used their own company name to put it where the Game Boy would be typically put on the spine of the box. Now, they're also doing an NES version, which I thought was really neat. But when it comes to Shapeshifter, they say it's developed by Green Boy Games. You play as Elliot, an ordinary human who runs into an elf while camping. Asked to save the elven world from the wizard spell, Elliot is given the power to turn into any animal he touches, letting him travel a wide range of environments. Unlike other projects, there's no Switch release planned here. So that's the other thing is that some of these Game Boy games are actually releasing on Switch and now you've got something like Dragonborn, which is coming out for Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Get ready to travel through the land of Aragon like you've never seen it before. Experience the legendary story of Dragonborn with enhanced graphics and gameplay mechanics, remastered soundtrack, bonus content, and a release date to be confirmed. You can even go ahead and pre-order these games. You can see what Green Boy did is similar to what Spacebot did, where they took out the Game Boy text and put their own company logo there to sell a physical copy, which has been out of stock for some time now. But what I also appreciate here is, once again, you look at some of the features for the game, and they talk about a turn-based system, mini quests, which are expected in RPGs nowadays. Six to seven hours of gameplay, multiple enemies, character zapping system, various collectibles, multiple endings. That's actually very impressive. And so I just thought that overall, the amount of funny enough RPGs coming out to the Game Boy Color 
is impressive, but don't worry, for those of you who are like me, who adore the Game Boy Advance and go, what about some love for Game Boy Advance? We have Good Boy Galaxy, which is a, a game about dogs, which is also seeing an insane amount of support over on Kickstarter. If you go there right now, you'll see that they are nearing the quarter million dollar mark, which, of course, Infinity has surpassed. And this has 3,200 plus backers with a number of days to go. Now, this is one of those games I was talking about that's coming out for Steam. It's coming out for Switch. So they're being a little more shrewd on the business front saying, we can sell some more copies here if we put this on hardware that's not been outdated for two decades. So why not make a buck or two? And I respect that. But what I respect more than anything is they're supporting the OG, the greatest system ever, which is the Game Boy Advance. You can see here that it is running on a Game Boy Advance. They have their own physical launch for it. And once again, the game features are awesome. Meet 50 characters and collect their friendship cards. Uncover secret areas hidden away. Discover a wide array of beasties to blast. Explore the galaxy, jumping between planets in your ship. Upgrade your blaster with special abilities. Cutting edge 0.2K graphics, which I'm guessing they're joking around with that because that seems to be a thing here with all these Game Boy games is it's on our hardware and we know it's old, but we've made it very impressive. But I think there's something timeless about 16-bit, 8-bit graphics. They can age infinitely, pardon the pun, because we have a game called Infinity here on this list. But all these games are being kickstarted and supported and are going to release within the next year. And I find that so beyond exciting because that's really what Retro Rebound is all about. It's about blending the nostalgia with the modernism, being able to say, let's take a look at the old with the new. So while we're gonna look at older games, it's cool that we have new games coming to old hardware and we have old hardware being updated by new creative heads. And overall, I found that these games would actually be pretty exciting for folks who are like me and looking to collect and play more Game Boy games. Cause I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think that the Game Boy family of hardware, specifically the Game Boy Advance, is just the greatest that we've ever seen. The ability to play, say, one game on the PS2 and then when you go to the Game Boy Advance, it's a completely different game. It's because games were cheap to make back then, but not only that, you had to get creative with the hardware that was handed to you, which is why I applaud these ambitious developers that have decided, well, why don't we go ahead and make Game Boy games in 2020? Because certainly, when you look at the Kickstarters for people who are backing over a quarter million dollars, granted it's coming from 3,000 people, so on and so forth, there's still a lot of money being poured into these games where people are ready and willing to go to make all of this happen and to have more Game Boy games coming out. And certainly, there will be more on the way. Now, for me personally, when I look at this entire list of games, I got to say, Infinity is the one that is calling my name. I think it's really neat that it leaked on the internet. It has a really good story to it, not literally the story you experience, but it's got a really cool story in that people played the ROM that was out there. They heard the soundtrack that was out there and went, hey, this is actually really good. I want to see the full thing. And a team stepped up and said, well, we'll do it. So while a lot of these are going through Kickstarter, which I know over the years has become a little bit more spotty where there's this sort of gray line of, we don't really have to give you everything that you've backed us for. And some people get very upset with Kickstarter projects. And of course, don't even get into the history of unfortunate Kickstarter projects. Hopefully none of these end up like that, but there are some that are already available for sale. And I think it's just really fascinating to see. So I wanted to go ahead and spotlight it here because I think it's really what the spirit of Retro Rebound is today. And of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think of new Game Boy games dropping in 2021. I mean, talk about something that you could never have expected. And what's calling your name on this list? I also think Good Boy Galaxy looks great because that reminds me of a game coming out on Xbox called Paparazzi. And it's a pretty much Pokemon Snap game with dogs, which just speaks to me and my soul. And being able to do Good Boy Galaxy where they have multiple routes and levels and you're collecting beasties and friendship cards. Your game had to be fun back then too. There had to be something, a mechanic that hooked you and grabbed you and pulled you in, no matter how simple it was. Something as complex as Golden Sun or something as simple as Super Mario World, it's really what I think defines the system is how similar they are, yet how different they are, right? You have these deep RPG systems, but you also have just a two-button platformer, and that's really it. And they are both 
superb in their own ways. So hopefully these games coming out in 2021 can channel that same energy. Certainly I'm excited to see, and I'd love to know what you're thinking down below. So do fire away. And with that, take good care of yourselves. And here's hoping for more Game Boy games in the next number of years coming out. Peace out.